31, welcome to example five. So example five, we have a word problem, right? You can see that fun paragraph hanging out in front of you and it might look a little intimidating, but as you read through these paragraph type problems, and we will have more and more of them as the semester progresses, good questions to ask yourself are, what are the variables? Right? Do I have one, do I have two, do I have three? What are they? Especially when you have two, See if you can figure out what X or Y is. And I'm gonna put those in quote marks because as we move through, especially the stats side of things, we're not necessarily gonna have X and Y. I can give you any letters I want. So just remember input, output, independent variable, dependent variable. And most of the time, if time is one of your variables, it'll be independent. It's not every time that time you have variable of time, that it's your independent variable, but most often it is. So if you ever see some kind of time variable, it's very likely that's playing the role of the independent variable. Whether we call it X or T, it just depends on the problem. So what are the variables, right? What are X and Y? And then did, were you given any ordered pairs? If it's a linear function, were you given the slope? Were you given one of each of these, just the slope, just the ordered pairs? It all depends on the wording of the problem and it'll change each time out. But for chapter four, these are very good questions to ask yourself. So I'm gonna read through this and we're gonna see what we can answer. So it says a new plant food was introduced to a young tree to test its effect on the height of the tree. The table below shows the height of the tree in feet, X months since the measurements began. Write a linear function, h of x, where x is the number of months since the start of the experiment. Interpret the meaning of the components of the equation. Okay, so, so there's a lot to unpack there, but let's think about what the variables are in this problem. And, and if you struggle with that, like in the word problem of it, just pick any ordered pair you see here. Let's just, I'm gonna circle this one. All right, eight and 16.5. Let's see if we can figure out what eight represents and what 16.5 represents. Well, eight is an X value, right? And they told me right here, X is the number of months since the start of the experiment. So I got some plant, right? Or actually I got a tree, excuse me. And they're trying some new plant food to make it grow. And apparently eight months since the measurements began, so eight months since I began this experiment, since the start of the experiment, I have this number 16.5. Well, what does 16.5? represent? Is it 16 and a half pencils, 16 and a half Facebook friends, 16 and a half iPhones? What are the units on this? If we look through it, right, if we read this, it says the table below shows the height of the tree. All right, so my two variables are the number of months that I have been running this experiment. And as those number of months progress, I'm keeping track of the height of the tree. So those are the two quantities that are varying. So these are all months up here and these are all heights of the tree down here. Now, as I said, anytime you see a time unit, and in this case, we're talking about number of months, right? Months is a time variable. That is gonna be our X variable. And it looks like they are actually calling it X here. So great. Now height of the tree would be my Y variable but in this example, I'm being asked to call it h of x. Okay, so we've got x against h of x, and the capital H stands for height. And this is, uh, and then I'm asking you, did I give you ordered pairs or did I give you a slope? And if you look at the table of values, I, I gave you ordered pairs. I actually gave you five of them. I'm gonna erase this one, or erase the circle. All right, so these are all the number of months since the experiment began, and this is the various heights of the tree, and you can see they're varying, right? I go from zero to two to four to eight to 12. These are not the same numbers. These X values are changing. They are varying. They are not constant. And these Y values, or technically these H of X values, these, those are also varying. They're not constant. We can see the tree is growing. The height is increasing. All right, so with all of that, let's see what they're asking me to do. I have a bunch of setup, and the first thing it says is write a linear function, H of X. Well, if I wanna write a linear function, I'll put it in slope-intercept form. So I need the slope and the y-intercept. If I want the slope, I need two ordered pairs and I can, I can use the slope formula. You can choose any 
of these two ordered pairs. I'm going to pick these two, the first two. I like working with the smaller number of it, or the smallest numbers available. So I'm going to use these two ordered pairs. So we've got 0 and 12.5, and then I've got 2 and 13.5. Let's find the slope between them. We'll do change in y or change in height over change in x. So I'm um, looking at this, this looks like it's the ratio one out of two. Now, let's just take a little pause right here and instead of thinking just about the numbers, add another fraction here and let's think about the units. All right, it's, it's always good, especially with these word problems where I'm going to have to interpret to think about the units that would be on the numerator and denominator. All right, so 13.5 minus 12.5. Yes, it's the number one, but one what? And what were the units on this y variable? Well, our y variable, or our h of x variable, was the height of the tree. And they told us the height was in feet. All right, our x variable down here on the denominator, this 2, all right, because I was doing 2 minus 0, these are x values. Well, what were the units for the x variable? It looks like it was months. So what happened to this tree? Well, in two months, it grew one foot, all right? Change in x over change in y. Now, if I wrote this one half, if I wrote it as a decimal, it would be 0.5, right? And I can always make that its own unit ratio. When I say unit ratio, sometimes that can be a bit confusing with looking at the units of these problems, but unit ratio just means your denominator is one. And again, the units would still be feet per month, right? So feet, if I wrote the slope out, feet per, right? Anytime we see per, we know a fraction, feet per month, which is saying for every one month that goes by, every one more month of this experiment, my tree grows about half a foot. That's what the slope is telling me. Okay, so this is all fine and good. I have the slope, but again, my first direction here was write a linear function. Well, for h of x, I'm going to need mx plus b. Well, I already, I know m, I just found it, it's 0.5, so I know h of x is 0.5x plus, all right, what was my y-intercept? Well, you could use point-slope form, you could, you could do all sorts of things to find b, but also, you already have it. This ordered pair here is the y-intercept, because when x was 0, the height of the tree was 12.5. So here is my linear function. I found it. I calculated the slope, I was given the y-intercept, and I put it into slope-intercept form. And that was the first direction, right? A linear function where x is the number of months since the start of the experiment. Done. Now it says interpret the meaning of the components of the equation. When I say interpret, I want you to interpret the slope and I want you to interpret the y-intercept. So let's start to think about what this one-half means and what this 12.5 means. So the first thing we're gonna do over here, let's interpret the slope. And anytime you wanna interpret the slope, look at this unit ratio and, and interpret it, right? For every one month, for every one additional month of this experiment, the height of the tree grows by an average of 0.5 feet. So for each, additional month of the experiment, the plant's height, actually it wasn't a plant, I believe this was a tree, the tree's height increases or grows, increases by an average of 0.5 feet. Right? So if we're taking a look at this, I, you can see both the units of the x's and the y's, or the x's and the h of x's. Right? So for every one month increase, or for each additional month of the experiment, the tree's height, now I put increases because the slope was positive. If my slope was negative, I would have put decrease. I need to put average because slopes are average rates of change. It doesn't mean that each month 
this tree grew exactly half a foot. Maybe the first month was 0.6 feet and then the next one was 0.4 feet, but they average out to 0.5. So we know it grows an average of 0.5 feet. Okay, to interpret the y-intercept, I'm gonna scoot this up just a bit so that I have some room. Okay, so if I wanna interpret the y-intercept, All right, I have zero, 12.5. So when X is zero, that means I'm at the start of my experiment. So at the beginning of my experiment, or you could say zero months into the experiment. All right, and then 12.5, well that represents the height of the tree. So the tree's height was 12.5 feet. So when we got this tree, it was 12 and a half feet tall, and it looks like over the span of about a year, it grew six feet, which is a lot. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty tall tree. Imagine you have a tree that's 18 and a half feet tall. I mean, I'm only five feet, so that's more than three times my size. It's a large tree. All right, so with that, we're gonna review up a little bit more, or, or yeah, I should say review up how to graph linear functions. I'm gonna show you two ways to graph the same function. All right, I'll see you in a bit, gang. Bye.